Okay, so our final Le Chatelier's principle system that we're going to look at is the cobalt with cobalt chloride. So here I have already a solution of cobalt um, chloride that's diluted for us to take a look at. Um, some students say this is a raspberry or a burgundy color. So I'm going to get a little bit to play with. Just pull it out of here. So right now we have a combination. This is cobalt chloride. And so this is a mixture right now of the cobalt hexahydrate and the cobalt that has four chlorines in it already. And it's a mixture of these colors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add extra chloride. Now Le Chatelier's principle says if I add enough chloride, I should be shifting the equilibrium all the way over to the right, and then I could tell what color this one is. So I'm going to do that by adding a little bit of hydrochloric acid. This is concentrated, so we're just going to do it a drop at a time. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Are those colors showing up as it's dropping in? Mm-hmm. Just barely. You can see it down the side. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now, I know the procedure says don't add too much. I'm just going to add a bunch because, you know. <laughs> winging it. I'm winging it. Pan okay. Pandemic mode. I really wanted to see what color that is. Now, if I'm looking at it on a background, it's really got a rich blue color. So that tells me that this one here is deep blue. So I've just established that. Okay. Now, let's, we're going to play with... This, this one's red. That one's red. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to play with the temperature because this is, this reaction, all reactions are either endothermic or exothermic, and i got to figure out which one this is. If it's endothermic, we're going to treat heat as a reactant. If it's exothermic, heat as a product. So I am going to make a little more of this to play with. So here we go. Okay, and let's see, I've got to make sure that three identical test tubes, one milliliter of cobalt chloride, and that's all, okay. Control. We're gonna say milliliters about a squirt. I just want to do them all equally. Equal enough? Looks like. Okay, equal enough. All right, so now I'm gonna keep one at, temp at room temperature for a control, and actually that this big tube here can act as my control very well. Now I'm gonna get it hot, and we'll get one of them cold. We're having to improvise today. We're here during the COVID pandemic, and we are working without our ice machine right now because it went down. So one's getting hot, one's getting cold. La -dee -da, -dee da dee da Well, I'm getting bored. This is taking way too long. Should we amp it up? What do you have in mind? I think maybe a Bunsen burner would be better. That would be nice. Let's because I'm just, I'm having a hard time seeing it. So let's, let's just, you know, we'll go all the way to the bunch of there, so. Did you remember to get a striker? I did. <laughs> I put together to light a Bunsen burner on camera without messing up. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Okay, so here in the YouTube, this is, this is kind of nice. This is the original YouTube. I can heat one side and leave the other side 
as it is, we can compare the temperature. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna heat this side right here. I've gotta be careful that I don't flash boil it. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bit, but I think I might want to start this part over again. I think I'm too dilute to get this to work. Dilute in what way? It's, got, it's too dilute a solution. So let's pause this. Uh, three, two, one, go. Okay, so we are going to look at the effect of temperature now on our system. We tried the hot water bath and it just wasn't very, I don't know, impressive. So we're gonna amp it up a bit and go straight with the heat. So we're gonna light our Bunsen burner here. Morgan, did you steal my striker? I did not. <laughs> you totally stole my striker. <laughs> here it is, we got it. Found it, I okay, it. no pause. <laughs> you know, it's always your lab partner. You can play everything on your lab partner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna heat this right hand side. Now, when I look at this, it's actually going to be easier to see against a white background. So this is my starting point and I'll just check the color occasionally as we go, but I'm gonna really attempt not to light the paper on fire. Or your phone. Or my phone. Or you. That'd be appreciated. Morgan, can you get a close-up of the top of the right-hand side where it's boiling a bit and up at the side of the glass? I'm wondering. Spread your fingers out. Oh. See that blue that's forming there at the top? Whoa, okay, mm -hmm. that's the danger. Too much. How about that's enough? <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna put this paper behind here, and can you see a difference in the colors with the right-hand side and the left-hand side? Yeah, the right hand is appreciably darker. And the shade's different, too. And um, as we looked at that ring, were you able to see that blue ring up there just, when we first just started? Barely. There, how nope, about that? That's that a good one. See that blue in there? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what, what we can learn from that. So I know that when um, I added heat, I'm getting more of the blue color. So if we think about Le Chatelier's principle here, if the system was exothermic and I heated it up, we would expect to see a shift to the left, which means it would go to the red side. However, if it is endothermic and heat is a reactant increasing the temperature would shift it to the right and we would see the blue color. So we can look at the evidence of the shift with temperature to determine if it's endothermic or exothermic. Okay, so one final idea that I want to discuss with you is what is the value of this equilibrium constant light? So Morgan, can you um, get the paper here? So if I'm looking at my equilibrium constant, my Kc value here, it's going to equal the concentration of the product over the concentration of the chloride to the fourth power times the concentration of the cobalt hexahydrate there. 
Okay, so if I look at how the molarity is changing over time, the units on this equilibrium, I know equilibrium constants are unitless, but effectively this will be molarity cubed on the bottom. So if I look at molarity on the top, molarity to the fourth, and molarity on the bottom, I have one over molarity cubed. So as you, if I look at the molarity, if the molarity value here is going to decrease, you're right, it is to the fourth. See, it's a good thing you're there. <laughs> okay, so um, I, can, I can look at the effect of dilution. When I dilute this, it doesn't dilute the numerator and the denominator by the same amount. If I'm looking at this as a delta n value or a delta molarity, that the, the molarity on the left-hand side, there's more moles in solution on the left than there is on the right. So I can look at the effect of adding a bunch of water. So if... I add water to this. If this is true, adding water, I'm diluting the, the denominator more than the numerator, so I should expect a shift. So as we add water, it's going more towards the red color and less towards the blue color. Should we should send it back to the to the blue? If you can. I'm going to add a little bit of acid and I'll send it back. Oops. It's kind of hard with that concentration. It wants to. It wants to. It's just having a hard time. Let me get rid of a little bit. To use the acid up somehow. There we go. Ooh, that's cool. It still wants to. <laughs> so it's having a harder time doing it because of all of that extra water. There we go. Now what's interesting with this, I'm just going to keep playing here. Okay, so what happens if I add water? That's pretty cool. Back to red. All right. 